Highness faring these days, Father? Well, I hope. King Ambrosius is as healthy as ever, dear. Keeping his strength is part of his duty, after all. The prosperity of our fair Premapia hinges on his might. And with the ever-rising threat of demon peace, that might will soon be tested. I think he knows it, too. We just presented the Night Runners of Laiala Academy with a large sum of money and a rather splendid speech. It's his way of telling us to raise more Night Runners and do it quickly. That husband of yours will have his hands full. There's no need to worry about Mavius, Perhaps not, but I can't help worrying about my grandson there. I can understand that. Ernesty isn't as developed as the other boys his age. He's small, but I can't shake the feeling that he's destined for greatness. <laughs>
lost in the blink of an eye. You're so slow, kids. They're going to find us. Don't be in such a hurry. He's supposed to be here in the morning. I don't want to see him. But Mom really wants us to meet him. What's up? He's not my father. And he never will be. Noble or not. But he is a noble. We have to. Fine, then you can stay here. Nah, someone's got to watch you. Hey, don't say it like that. Uh, uh, Eddie! You saved me. You're welcome. My name's Ernesty, by the way. Wait, you're a boy? You're lucky I was training here. Be careful, the rooftops are slippery in the morning. Why? Hold on. If it's so dangerous, why are you up here? Suspicious! Also, I refuse to believe a boy's that cute! This was Ernesty's first meeting with his future lifelong friends, Arkid and Adeltrude. You used magic, didn't you? Do you think you could teach us some too? Spellcraft isn't something you can just pick up. First, you have to develop your mana or magic power, and that takes lots of training. I'll do it! If you're serious about it, I don't mind teaching you, but it will be tough. It's so cute! Listen to you sounding all reliable! Mistress? I found the mamper on the roof! Uh-oh. We'd better go. See you tomorrow morning? Sure. Ernesty's hometown, Lahiala, had a singular purpose within the kingdom of Fremavia to train the night runners and produce the silhouette knights they would pilot. Of course, Ernesty's dream was to become a pilot himself. So when the time was right, he joined the academy. In those booklets, you'll find a comprehensive guide to all of your classes. Please find the section marked elementary school and- Ornamental silhouette design? I can't wait to take that class. Mr. Echevalier, that course is for middle school students. For now, we'll be focusing on the development of your magic power. I understand that, sir. The thing is, I want to be a night runner as soon as possible. Unfortunately, there are two fundamentals you sorely lack. A complete knowledge of the basics and stature. Come on, Ernie. Try not to let it get to you. Of course, the seats would be designed for full-grown adults. I should have realized that. I need to get big and fast! No way! You have to stay cute and small forever! Unless there's another way. <gasps> That's it! If I can't change myself, I'll change the silhouette knights instead! What do you mean? I'll just build one that I can fit in! I think he's gone crazy. Build a knight? Of course, why wouldn't I? Customizing's the best part! Though, if we're talking a redesign from the ground up, that makes having a complete understanding of the design principles crucial. I need to get out of that magic class and into middle school courses <sighs> pronto. <laughs> Hurry up, Stumpy! Don't get it! I'll be sorry when I catch you! Give it back! <laughs> this hammer's too good for a dirty dwarf! It's ours now! Because you're out of luck, freak! Hey, what's going on? Uh, they think that they can get away with picking on me because my legs are too short to keep up with them! Those dumb jerks! I saved up for months to afford that hammer! <sighs> they can't have it! Wait a second! <sighs> Sorry, huh? I was wondering what you study here. You kidding? I'm a dwarf. What do you think I'm gonna study? My family's been knightsmiths for generations. Please, forgive my ignorance. I happen to have a great deal of respect for anyone involved with Silhouette Knights. If you're interested, I think I can help you out here. Back sins a slow poke, his brains are full of hate. When I get my hands on them... Let's do it, you two. Okay. Arrow back Ready? Something. Looks like you've used it a lot. It 
Only for the usual stuff. Usual? My point is, night runners face times when a more precise control of magic is needed. Maybe changing the shape of the basic rod could accomplish that. May I? Something like this. I don't get it. Yeah, it looks weird. This would give the rod more utility. It combines the power of a sword to cut enemies with a gun that fires magic. Huh? Interesting idea you got there, kid. I like it. If you can try to make one for me, I'll show you what it can do. Now, with confidence like that, I'd be crazy to say no, right? We have some talent in this year's batch, wouldn't you say? It would seem so. Of course, the problem with talented students is that some of them are painfully aware of it. Excuse me, may I make a request, sir? Yes, what is it, a Chevalier? If I showed that my current skills are far beyond the content of this course, could I skip magic fundamentals and go straight to middle school? Young man, I highly doubt you could produce such fantastic results. Then allow me to prove it to you, sir. If I do, there's a class during this period I'd like to switch to. Being the headmaster's grandson doesn't give you the right to special treatment. I don't want any. I'd like you to make the decision based solely off my abilities. You do understand that being excused from magical fundamentals would mean you possess the same level of mana and knowledge as a middle school student. I do, sir. Very well. We'll see why you're so confident. Take your position. First, a piercing lens. Uh, hi, 
nice of Council you. President. Big Sister will do fine. We may have different mothers, but our father's blood still runs through each of us. I take it you're the gifted Ernesty I've heard so much about? Yes. Huh? Don't be surprised. Everyone at the Academy's heard of you. Though I'm not sure why you want to advance in grade so quickly. What about the silhouette knights is so enticing? That would take a while to explain. You're a little on the eccentric side, aren't you? Big sis! It's not weird. I didn't mean anything by it. I simply have a fondness for kids with looks and intelligence. Uh, Sadly, the third years have night training, so I must be off. I hope someday I'll truly get to know your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ernie. Mm -hmm. Guess I hoped this would never come up. So I kept it from you. The council president's dad, Marquis Joachim Salati, happens to be our dad, too. He and our mom had a thing, but she isn't a noble, so they couldn't marry. Which means Addie and I, well, we're... Excluded from the line of noble succession, right? I understand the situation. Just tell me what you need me to do. To do? Attack head-on? Ignore her? Or ambush her at night. Ambush! It's safer! Wait! None of those! Where'd that even come from? If my friends are in trouble, I have no intention of ignoring that. Whenever you need help, I'll be there. Uh, that really means a lot. You're a hell of a friend, Ernie. <laughs> Giant robots really are the best! Merely looking at it brings me peace. Every family should have one. I heard that the Academy Silhouette Knights were passed down from the military, but this one's undergone some extensive customization. You almost can't tell it started out as a Saladrea. The Earl Cumber and I have been together for nearly two years. I have made a few special modifications myself. Good to see you, Edgar. Are you going out on patrol tonight all by yourself? Uh-huh. My partner Dietrich's being difficult. You seem almost as passionate about Silhouette Knights as I am. Really? I guess I can see why you would think that. It's important to me. The Rokumber isn't just my weapon. It's my armor. My irreplaceable partner. I'm so envious. I wish I could speed up time and get a partner of my own. Well, wanna hop in? <gasps> I can't let you pilot it, but you can sit oh, in it. Oh, yes, please! night exercises. We're getting out of here. First and second years, leave your things and get in the transports immediately. High school students advance in your silhouette nights and cover their retreats.
Sorry we're late. Now let the pros go to work. Go where? Do your thing! Move to a safe distance! Help me clear a path for them to retreat! Hear that, Transorcus? Our turn! You'll get through without paying a price, damn monster. Exercise, right? If that was the case, we wouldn't have been overrun with demon beasts like that. If I'm right, this wasn't random and we're far from being out of danger. It's possible that herd was driven here by a more terrifying power. Division class? <laughs> I'm afraid so. It's heading for the capital. As we speak, it could be making its way through Cloquet Forest. 
Even if we were to bring together all the silhouette knights of Yontunin, there's still less than a hundred of us here. A division class demon beast would make short work of us. <laughs> we should mobilize now, sir! Like he all the students left for Cloquet Force yesterday. <laughs> of all the times. Gather up all the night runners in the vicinity. As soon as the first group's ready to go, we're heading out. Sir! I pray we make it in time. What if the demon beasts weren't actually running toward us, but instead were fleeing from something? If that's true, what scared them? Something far stronger than they were, and bigger.
to accept, but for now there's no way I can control a silhouette knight through normal means. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time to do the job the right way. I'll just give it the old college try. Okay, now, let's see what this baby can do with a programmer at the helm.
magic through the catalyst crystals infused within their bodies. The most powerful magic a behemoth possessed was the enhancement magic that supported its massive frame. I see. Guess I'll have to wear the big guy down.
lightning traveled through the behemoth's eye, burning everything along its optic nerve until it struck the brainstem. Despite its powerful magic, even a division-class demon beast could not survive without its biological core intact. Once the brain was destroyed, the enhancement magic that supported the beast's colossal frame vanished, and it was crushed under its own massive weight. Well fought, everyone! I want a report from each company. If you can move, get to work recovering the beast's heart! I'm so sorry, Dietrich. I thought you had abandoned us, but I was wrong. I won't forget what you did, my friend. I thought we were dead for sure. Oh, hey, Edgar! What's with the face? <laughs> I told you, Big Sis! Ernie stole a knight and saved us all by himself! <sighs> Poor Dietrich. I don't think he'll ever live this one down. Hey, Ernie? What if you couldn't get inside the silhouette knight? What was the plan then? Probably to catch up with the carriage and evacuate. It was all a big gamble, but I couldn't let the opportunity slip by me. Well, at least he's willing to admit as much. And now, I know I'm too small to pilot, so building a mech of my own is the only option left to me. <sighs> I thought you were done! I'm just getting started! You'll see, Addy. One day soon, I'll pilot a silhouette knight made with my own hands! He's twelve? You're saying a prepubescent child defeated a division-class demon beast? Yes, sire. Announcing this would affect the knight's morale, so we're keeping it quiet for now. Ernesty Echevalier. Laurie's grandson, perhaps. I believe so, sire. Even the most loyal dogs can turn on their masters. He could be dangerous to us. I suppose I'll have to meet this child and find out. Greetings, Majesty. Sorry to keep you waiting. This is my grandchild, Ernesty Echevalier. It's an honor to meet you, sire. The report said the child was a boy. It's true. I can prove it if required. Fearless and straightforward, despite his appearance, he is Lori's. Thank you for inviting us, Your Majesty. I'm impressed. He's quite composed for someone his age. I wish more children showed such respect. I'm honored by your praise, Majesty. I'm sure by now you've wondered why I summoned you here, Ernesty. Your victory the other day was unexpected, to say the least, and presented quite the conundrum. I'm unsure how to reward you for it. Thank you. But Ernesty doesn't require a reward. He's still a child. Child or no, I cannot fail to compensate someone who defeats a behemoth single-handedly. 
What is it you desire? Name it, and it shall be yours. Anything. Calm down. He can't be asking me this out of goodwill. There's a motive. I should assume this is some sort of test on his part. Should I just say I don't need anything? Or throw caution to the wind? And if I choose the latter, what do I ask for? The latest model of Silhouette Knight? No. No, this is the chance of a lifetime. I should ask for something impossible to obtain. Something I'll never have another chance to get. In that case, I ask for this, sire. I want knowledge. Knowledge that can't be found in any books. Only you can grant this to me, sire. I want to know how to make an ether reactor. The heart of a knight. <clears throat> you ingrate! How dare you take advantage of the king's generosity! That is one of our country's greatest treasures, a secret kept for generations! Ixgar, that's quite enough. You are correct, young Echevalier. I am the only one who can grant you such knowledge. But I must ask, what will you do once you've learned the mysteries of the Knight's Heart? Okay, this is it. As I'm sure you're aware, Majesty, I'm currently learning to be a Knight Runner at La Hiel Academy. But my ultimate goal is, and has always been, to acquire my own unique Silhouette Knight. Ah, now that's a wish I could easily grant. You should have asked for that instead of the Ether Reactor. Sorry, I wasn't clear enough. I meant, I want to build my own Silhouette Knight. It won't be special unless I make it with my own hands. You believe you can make a Silhouette Knight from scratch? I do indeed. And why is this so important to you? Because... It's my hobby, sire! <laughs> what a ridiculous answer. You surprised me, boy. And that is not an easy feat. Sorry. Please be merciful. I promise to give my grandson a stern talking to. Granted. <gasps> The knowledge shall be yours. Majesty! However, slaying a mere behemoth is not enough to justify your request. If you truly want the Ether Reactor, you must first prove to me that you can make good use of its power. Okay, how would you like me to go about that, Your Majesty? Build your knight. Though for this challenge, you will merely need to create a chassis. If your new design impresses me and can satisfy my standards, then I will grant your wish and your dream will be a reality. <laughs> I won't fail you, sire! The Marquis, Joachim of Salati, invited his children back from Lahiala Academy. Father, it's good to see you. <laughs> Indeed, it seems you're doing well. So, uh, what's the reason you summoned us here, Father? Stefania informs me that you two are rather close to Ernestia Chevalier. Um, yeah? His Majesty the King has taken quite a liking to him as well. Uh. I'm interested in the boy's progress. If he is successful in any way, let me know at once. I would like to be the first to inform His Majesty. I don't know. If we do that, will it help, Ernie? Yes, of course. Though I would appreciate it if you didn't tell him we talked about this. I don't want it to distract him. His task is daunting enough. If I see anyone slacking, you'll get my foot up your ass! What happened here? I just replaced this crystal tissue. It looks like it's been to hell and back. How did they put it through this much stress in one night? Beautiful. <clears throat> Even like this, they're elegant in their own way. The form collapses, and only the wreckage remains. This is true, refined beauty! <gasps> and then, when you realize you're responsible for it, you're not sure whether to feel guilty or proud of the destruction. Who the hell are you? Please don't you mind him, boss! Sorry, David, I was just leaving! <sighs> Hold it! <laughs> so, kid, you're responsible for this? I'd like to hear how you managed it. <clears throat> Sorry, can you go over it again? Sure, it's simple. I copied out all of the scripts from the Magius engine, 
did the calculations myself and used the custom scripts to pilot the unit. Let's say, hypothetically, that you did. What does any of that have to do with the way Guerre fell apart? Well, I was effectively a stand-in for the engine. That allowed me to remove all its limiters and do whatever I wanted. I took every ounce of mana I had to give and used it to attack. Of course, that depleted the enhancement magic holding the frame together. That sound like a decent summary to you? Or were you too busy pissing yourself? <laughs> yeah, that about sums it up, boss. Dietrich really surprised me. He was incredible out there. I would have been roasted without his help. That last attack on the behemoth would have been impossible to pull off alone. We made a great team. No, please. I didn't do anything. Why are you so gloomy? It's a time to celebrate. We should be praising the Guerre. Sure, kid. Whatever. Let's get back on topic. You're telling me if you use your full strength, any night that you piloted would end up just like Guerre. If it's a current model, yeah, it would pretty much be scrap. Uh, you idiot! We can't build a new unit every other day! You don't have to. I've already come up with a solution. Is this really crystal tissue? It would increase structural integrity tenfold. And power. I call it the strand-type crystal tissue. Amazing. We only swapped out 30% muscle mass and it worked great. Each fiber is fairly weak on its own, but weaving them together dramatically increases their strength. And compared to laying them out in a straight line, this allows them to expand and contract over a greater distance, which leads to greater energy output. Well, I'll be damned. Instead of just repairing all these units, we're giving them an upgrade. Before you do, I have one more idea. What if we made an alteration to the humanoid shape? Hmm. All right. I'll hear you out. Lay it on me. Boss? About time. Good to see you again. Oh, Ernesty. What are you doing in here? <sighs> just living the dream. Pardon? Helvi, I wanted to talk to you about the Trandorcus. Yeah, it's a real mess, isn't it? Don't worry, the boss will have it as good as new in no time. In fact, he'll make it even stronger and faster than before. Really? Yep, but we need your help. That's why we called you here. All right. Hm. Silhouette knights have only ever had two arms to work with. But when you stop to think about it, it's not as efficient as it could be. To use magic in combat, knight runners need to switch from sword to rod and vice versa for melee combat. It takes time, and in that split second, while the Night Runner is vulnerable, a demon beast could gain the upper hand. True, but we're so used to swapping on the fly, it's a simple matter. Sure, but I think we can make it even simpler. Humor me for a moment. What if we added another pair of arms to the back of the unit? Huh? Interesting thought, but that form is traditional. Silhouette knights have always been based on humans. That's part of the reason we're able to operate them so easily. I mean, sure, we could put arms in the back, but how are we supposed to move them? No need to worry, they're not going to be fully functional limbs. Their only purpose will be to hold the rod so the pilot can fire them. It's a crude design, but it will work for the testing phase. For convenience, we'll refer to the rod the subarms are holding as the unit's back weapon. We'll use a dedicated script to control the subarms movement. This will include gripping and moving the back weapon. We'll also add an aiming function to the basic controls. And with a targeting reticle on the heads up display, all the night runner has to do is aim and fire. It's simpler than I thought it would be. With enough practice? I bet I could use the sword and rod at the same time, no sweat. Their form may be human, but silhouette knights are just advanced tools. If there's some function we want them to have, don't you think we should change that form to create it? Tell me, Silverhair, you sure you're a human? I mean, how do you come up with these ideas? I've never seen or heard of anything like them. Because they don't exist! That's why I'm making them? It's called invention. Hey, Ernie. What's up? If you add those things, Silhouette Knights will get even stronger. Yep, that's the plan. Be honest. Once you finish them, 
You'll fight the demon beasts again, right? Uh, well, yeah, of course I will. That's a Night Runner's job, after all. The entire kingdom counts on us for protection. Then let us help. There must be something we can do. Please, Ernie. <laughs> the thought of you facing demon beasts by yourself is worse than death. I don't ever want to feel that helpless again. Let us fight those monsters with you. The next time you face a demon, I won't be stuck in a carriage. You taught us magic, so you can teach us to be night runners too. <gasps> you got it! And I've already come up with the perfect plan! You're sure you could pull this off? Honest? I am. I just need your permission. Most of the units are being repaired now. What you're proposing would keep them out of commission longer. The creation or major overhaul of a silhouette knight is complicated. The whole process will require parts and time, not to mention plenty of manpower. If I'm going to achieve a simpler way to construct silhouette knights, I need this. But first I'll make a practice model! Thank you all for coming out. As you can see, this new machine is far simpler than a full-sized unit. They'll be essential for testing, and I'd like all of you to construct them with Batson leading the project. Us? Make those things? And so, Ernie's new plans were set in motion. Soon, the entire school would be involved. <laughs> tissue worked as we intended, but the underlying framework's completely blown out. I didn't think of that. <laughs> Guess we'll be burning the midnight oil on this one. We're counting on you. Good luck. Okay, time to get some training in. Take it easy, you moron. We just finished tuning that one. Oh, your frame's so cold and hard. My dear, you're perfect. Trying to walk. Ah! Fun, huh? It just takes some getting used to. Look, Ernesty, I get that these silhouette gears are important to you and all. It's just the controls are complicated and they use too much mana. There's no way these will serve as a replacement for silhouette night training. You really think so? One, two, Allie, one, two. Well, those two are unique. Couldn't you incorporate a Magius engine at least? That way, I can operate this thing with ease. Quit complaining, Edgar. Well, it's pathetic. You're the top knight in Lightyala. Act like it. What have you done with Dietrich? Very funny. These gear things really force you to think about how much mana you're using. Night runners of any level could learn a lot training with them. Hey, D, wanna play tag? You're it. Not for long. <laughs> <laughs> you sure changed. What happened? After tons of research, trials, and revisions, a modified silhouette night was completed. Now it was time to put Ernesty's new alterations to the test. All set? When you're ready, try standing up. Deploying the sub-arms now. 
Display reticle. Lock target. And fire. It's even more accurate than I'd hoped. Test fire complete. Retracting subarm. Something like that? Isn't it more impressive if you use the magic yourself, Ernie? Well, with this, we can increase firepower at will. But what's important is that our hard work paid off. This silhouette knight took its first steps today. And that is worthy of a few happy tears. I don't really get it, but I'm happy for you nonetheless. Congratulations, <laughs> Ernie! What's your take on this new equipment, Dee? won't just help with long-range combat, but close quarters, too. I like it. True, but it's one thing if we're up against demon beasts. What happens if we have to fight the new unit? I'll tell you. You'll get knocked flat on your top knight backside. With this new power, no one's a match for me. Even the great Edgar couldn't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with my baby. Somehow I doubt that's true. Do you have the guts to find out? Jeez, they didn't have to make a big deal of this. It's only a mock battle. You better not think of backing out on me. If you're both ready, we can get this started. This is the last trial. We get to see what our new unit can really do. To my right, the new and renamed Telestale. And its opponent, the battle-hardened Earlcumber. Knights, bow. Take positions. It may be shiny and new, but that won't decide the fight. It always comes down to skill. I won't forget you, Trandorcus. Thank you for everything. Let's go, Telestale. Begin! Why isn't she taking advantage of her longer range? Let's give a proper hello. into a corner just isn't fun. A head-on attack? I'd expect nothing less from you, Edgar. If you're going all out, then so will I! Forever. 
ever. Well, not quite yet. The Telestale may be finished, but it's nowhere near completed. We've got a long way to go. I was afraid he'd say that. We're walking a difficult path here. It can't be trod in just one day. <laughs> yeah, okay. So his pet project isn't finished yet. All right, we'll stick around and see what else he has in store. By this time, a tiny thorn had already embedded itself in Lahiala Academy. Unfortunately, no one, not even Ernesty, had noticed its presence. After a successful trial of the Telestale's new armaments, Ernestine discovered a flaw in his design. The unit's mana drained rapidly. Unless he could fix this, the design would not be suited for actual combat. It's like we thought. New output killed him. Fuel efficiency's non-existent. Figures. Unfortunately, we can't make any changes to the ether reactor. That would fix everything. Couldn't we just increase the amount of storage capacity? Sure, but we'd have to install extra crystal tissue to compensate for it. But more tissue means more mana usage. We'd be back where we started. How can we break this cycle? No problem. This sort of thing is Ernie's specialty. It is? Yeah, silly. Uh. You're the one who kept saying the new knights don't have to look human. So you don't have to stick to human muscles. Right? Yeah, I didn't think of that. If our goal is mana capacity, then the knight's form doesn't really matter. Of course, it's kind of embarrassing you came up with it. Hey, what's that? Lee? Almost. Good. Stop there. Whoa. What are you adding to our gears? They look pretty intense. It would be easier to show than tell. Uh-huh. Kid? Patty? Ready when you are. All set. Let the test begin. First, we'll try the wire anchor. <laughs> successful field test. Agreed. Let's move on. This is a new ranged weapon made with the strand type crystal tissue. We're calling it the Scorpius. It would be faster for you to use it than for me to explain how it works, so just give it a whirl. Okay. Like this. Here goes. range so far, they effectively split the continent of Zetterland in two. To the west of the mountains lies the Western Kingdoms, the so-called Occident. And, of course, our fair kingdom of Fremavia encompasses the eastern half. We are connected to the Great Bocuse Forest, where the demon beasts originate. It's frustrating. I'll have to consider the Telestale complete for now. But I already know what my next step will be. I wanted to speak to you about this new unit, Ernesty. When you started this project, I expected little more than an improvement to the basic Salodria model. But this... You've made something completely different, haven't you? 
Yep. There's never been a silhouette night like it. I see. Should I inform His Majesty that you're ready to present the unit? No, not yet. He asked for the best I had to offer. We still have a long way to go before it's ready. If he wasn't so impressive, this kid would be downright terrifying. The Telestala is a foundation. One that I intend to build a marvelous castle on top of. That's what it's going to take if I truly want to shock the king. Very well. But keep the shock to a minimum. My heart can't take it. Now then, it may not be finished, but I should turn in some form of report. The king doesn't need to be bothered with it. Submit a report to the lab instead. You mean the Silhouette Night Lab, right? Filling them in now would help streamline the overall process. Great idea, boss! Lori was concerned about the effect the new unit would have on the laboratory. Developing Silhouette Knights had always been a major government project. How would they respond when they learned a single Night Runner student had done it? Their reaction may not be favorable. Only time would tell. What do we do? About what? Our promise with Dad, stupid! Is it now the right time? Oh, right. We said we'd tell him whenever Ernie made progress. But we might as well. If we don't, he'll find out from the laboratory. It's better if we get to tell him ourselves. Good point! We can't have any of them taking credit for Ernie's hard work. Make sure this gets to Marky Dixgard. Of course, sir. I understand. I'll have all the students involved with the project gathered at once. We getting a reward or something? Somehow I doubt they're that generous. As you may have guessed, you've been summoned here because of your involvement with the new Silhouette Knight. We too are knights, the Order of the Scarlet Rabbit, sent by Marquis Dixgard. I am the commander, Sir Morton Fredholm. This feels off. Do not be alarmed. The Marquis has taken an interest in your project and wishes to see it for himself. We'd like you to send all these new units to Fort Casadusis, along with sufficient personnel to operate them. The Marquis' time is extremely valuable. With that in mind, we'll be leaving immediately. Uh... Excuse me, sir. This is obviously terrible weather to be operating Silhouette Nights in. Can't we wait it out? Afraid not. I've got a bad feeling about this. Shut up! Do you want to jinx them? Think uh, before you talk, stupid! Okay, I got it! Unfortunately, Kid's feeling turned out to be right.
superior to the Kaldatoas. I have no choice but to give it high marks. Uh, it's the single greatest thing ever, huh? Uh, sir? Never mind. It seems these new units will be a great benefit to us. We will treat them the same way as their predecessors. Sir? The Silhouette Knights represent our kingdom's greatest accomplishment. It took nearly 300 years for the original Saladrea to be replaced. And the current Kaldatoas have been in service for generations. Compared to that, this arrogant child's hobby makes creating a silhouette knight look like child's play. His Majesty would be excited over the boy's success. That's a problem. Hmm? That boy, he's up to something, and I will find out what it is no matter what. Uh. Father, we need to talk. Stefania? Why are you here? Would you mind clearing the room for a moment? There's an urgent matter I need to discuss with you. An urgent matter? Wait, how'd you get here from my hill? I need to talk to you alone! Very well. All right, what's this about? You owe me an explanation. Not until I get a straight answer. Father, what'd you tell the Marquis? Ernesty Chevalier, you've been busy as of late. It's a pleasure to see you again, sir. What can I do for you? You can go over the new unit. And you won't leave anything out. <laughs> As you can see, by replacing the old crystal tissue with the refined strand-type crystal tissue, and refitting the Telestale with it, we achieved nearly two times the output of existing units. Please refer to the paper I gave you for the next part. As I said before, the biggest flaw in the Telestale's design is its running time. Apart from that, I can refine it a bit more, especially in terms of production cost. We can expect improvement in regard to those two points in the future. Now, Ugh. the most important part of all, the ether reactor must still use existing technology. That's the biggest roadblock. It makes it hard to improve anything further. I hope you can...
can understand my dilemma here. Anyway, that's all there is to tell about the new unit and its future development plans. I hope it met your expectations. Yes. Do you have any further questions, sir? Of course. Plenty. Go ahead. As you know, I've been given full authority here. That means over you and the unit's development. In other words, the project is no longer yours. Any evaluations and decisions are mine to make from here on out. The explanation you just gave me will be the one I give to His Majesty verbatim. Do you have any problem with that? Not at all. Excuse me? That means I won't have to give His Majesty the same explanation myself, right? I'll leave it in your capable hands. Uh. Of course, if you have new questions, I'll happily answer them. <laughs> uh, you're saying you're okay with that? Okay with what? I'm confused, sir. Honor, wealth, status, your future, all of it. I don't understand. What are you playing at? Just what do you intend to do after this? Well, I'm still only a first-year student at the Night Runner Middle School, sir. I suppose I'll focus on graduating. Stop Did lying I... to me, you irreverent brat! This is a serious matter. Don't you understand what you've done? I, uh, developed a new silhouette knife. Don't make it sound so simple. Feels silly to explain this, but I'll do it anyway. Listen, ever since the founding of our kingdom, no, since the dawn of written history itself, no silhouette knight has ever been designed by one person. Such a feat was deemed to be impossible. Look, uh. the development of a silhouette knight is a major endeavor. For over half a millennium, they were only achieved through time and the hard work of countless personnel. But you, you go and make it look easy. Then you had the unmitigated gall to request access to the ether reactor, our kingdom's most vital secret. Why are you even pretending to be a normal child? Well, if it helps the Telestale isn't the final unit I was going to show the king... It wasn't? You're telling me you're not finished yet? Of course not! I was challenged! The king wanted to see the best machine I can make and I'm gonna give it to him! <sighs> the single greatest thing ever. Yeah! <laughs> what do you think of that, Newt? The crystal tissue could only support a maximum of 10 weights before, but now we've taken it up to 11. Well, the future is bright indeed. Don't tell me you intend to continue this folly. Of course I do. How will we ever improve unless we fail first? <laughs> I don't get it. Why? Why do all this? What is the point? Because it's my hobby, sir. I see. Very well, young man. I'm satisfied. In other words, you thought it'd be best for Ernie to meet the Marquis himself. More or less, yes. That's great. We don't need to worry after all. Why's that? Gus, it's Ernie we're talking about. Ah, oh, truthfully, I'd be more worried about the poor Marquis. No. If I were you three, I'd be worried about myself right now. Huh? I know for a fact that school wasn't canceled. You'll make up for it. <laughs> Let's hear what you have to say for yourselves. I just realized something! If I'm to entrust everything to you, it might be best to tell you all of my future plans for the unit. Have a look at this. You mean there's more? Uh. What are you talking about? This book represents my life's work. I believe everything it contains makes me worthy of learning the secret behind Fremavia's ether reactor. Oh. Now, relax. This might take us a while. Uh, 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 Maybe if I tried losing... He's oh, so no. late! Uh, doesn't he care about what this does to me? I can't go on like this. I need him here now. You don't think he likes Casadusas more than La Hiala, do you? <laughs> I'd stay there too, especially if there were no whiny brats to put up with. Oh, yeah? supposed to explain the Telestali to the Marquis, he should have been back sooner. You see? I was right! I'm gonna go talk to him! And if he won't come back with me, I'll drag him out of there by force! Do you realize how long it'll take to get there on foot? Not to mention...
bridge and the demon... But what are silhouette gears for? It can run faster than a horse, and it's got weapons to boot. Hmm. I'm going with you, sis. You can't do that. Huh? Think about this. Ernesty is there at the official invitation of Marquis Dixgard. You'd need a pretty good reason to pull him out of there. Got one? Pot, meat kettle. Oh. You've been whining about losing the Telestali ever since they took it out of the shop. We know the Earl Cumber's special to you, but I've seen the way you look at the new ones. Even if I liked them, it doesn't matter. The school's duty and my individual feelings are separate. We have more than the Earl Cumber. The other one's still got a few overhauls, too. Other one? You mean where? It's already equipped with subarms and the new strand type crystal tissue. It's practically a new unit. Once the overall's done, won't be staying here. All new units go to the Marquis, after all. We'll have to send it to Fort Casadusis. Is that a fact? Interesting. It'll need an escort. And since those Scarlet Rabbit chumps aren't here to do the job, we'll just do it ourselves. <laughs> you won't all get right. objections from me. I was itching for another field trip anyway. <laughs> Thanks, uh, boss! You're the best! Oh, uh, <laughs> sure. Several days later near the fort, a tragedy befell the small village of Gari. Parent 
Apparently only fighting demon beasts have made these country bumpkins easy prey for us. No need to worry, the Order of the Bronze Fang won't let your death be in vain. Stay sharp, we're going in! Right!
convoy from Lycheola. Brought together by a twist of fate, the two groups would soon clash. You there! We are Night Runners from Lycheola Academy. We are delivering these new units for inspection at the request of the Marquis.
back, but I'm here and ready to help. Uh, it's fine. You've done plenty. Nightrunners from Lahiala were en route when they attacked. They're currently in combat with the stolen units. What? If they're still fighting, there's a chance we can retake them. But we have to move quickly. Indeed. In that case, Ernesty, may I ask for your assistance a little longer? I'd be happy to. This isn't good. They'll catch up at this rate. We have a long way to go before we reach Vendo Badala. This thing's a mana guzzler. I'm losing power with every other step. I'd hope to bring it back in pristine condition, but that won't happen. Listen, your jobs are to distract and support only. Don't you dare get close to them. Aye, aye. We'll be cheering you on. Vernal, go around from the valley side. Roger. <laughs>
can't do that. I'll handle these insects. You can enter back to the fort. Are you seriously going to fight them all with just the quare? That's crazy! You'll die! Better than the alternative. I'd rather die than abandon my pride as a knight. Not fast, but you won't have to fight them alone! <laughs> Scouts reported back. They found traces of cursed bait in the forest. Uh, cursed bait? At the very least, that explains why the demon beast had been worked into such a frenzy. But who in Fremavia would use such a thing? Mm. No. It's entirely possible they weren't from our country. Then the stolen silhouette knight could be anywhere. Several days passed after what history would eventually call the Casadusus Incident. By the order of King Ambrosius himself, the students involved in the development of the Telestale were summoned to Schriever Castle for an audience. Your work on the new Silhouette Knight surpassed all my expectations. But now that one has been stolen, we must work diligently to move beyond your success and to better maintain the secrecy of your new developments for the foreseeable future. Therefore, I declare the creation of a new order. A group of knights who will assist in this great mission. Ernest E. Chevalier, I can think of no one better to command this order than you. <gasps> Thank you. I am honored. It won't be much of an order without a name, though. Silver, in honor of you. And from myself... I think Phoenix is fitting. The Order of the Silver Phoenix. I know we will do from a Via proud. <laughs> Silver Phoenix. It's a good name. Yeah, I guess it's all right. Helvi, there's something I haven't told you about the incident yet. Hmm? What's up? The stolen Telestale, the one I fought at the end, was the one made from Trandorcus. Sorry. I should have told you. It's fine. When I saw the other units, I knew they had taken mine. Uh, I see. Helvi, I promise. I'll get your partner back, even if it kills me. <laughs> They'll regret ever laying eyes on your Telestale. I'll be waiting. me then passes out too. I'm not a personal teddy bear. Cuddle Eddie, time to wake up. I can't move with you on me. But you're just so warm, Ernie. That makes me happy. <laughs> okay, I'm up. Stop. You're so mean, Ernie. That's not what you said a second ago. Rise and shine. We're almost home. After the Casadusus incident came to a conclusion, Ernestine and the others 
return to Lahiala. Meanwhile, the Talascale was sent to the nation's greatest research lab, the renowned Silhouette Knight Laboratory. What's the holdup? A prepubescent child designed this pile of scrap. How long could it take you to analyze? With all due respect, sir, the strand type crystal tissue and back arm technology are unlike anything we've seen before. The script work alone will take us some time. Not to mention the work you did. Uh, don't look so damn uh, impressed. Where's your pride as a lab member? Chief. Huh? Yelling won't get the work done any faster. How wonderful of it isn't Director Oliver. What brings you to our humble corner of the lab? Last I heard, you sat in your chair so long you sprouted roots. I had to see the new unit for myself. Innovations are something of a rarity around here. I'm quite eager to read your analysis of the unit. When should I expect it? When it's ready and not a moment before. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm far too busy for this nonsense. As I feared, this lab has been stuck in a rut for so long this project may have been too much for us. His Majesty won't be happy about this. Unless he intended for this to shake us up a bit. Stupid brat! Sucking up to the king doesn't make you cock of the walk! Enjoy this while you can. Once I've figured out how to use your unit to create a new mass-produced model, your part in Silhouette Night history will just be a footnote! Complicated things have gotten around here. Yes. Those damn raiders didn't help matters. I've been thinking about that. I believe someone from the Occident may have sent them. The Occident is the name given to the countries west of Fremavia, which lie beyond the border of the Abin Mountains. The very thought is enraging. The only reason why they have peace is due to our constant efforts to fight off the demon beasts. The attack on Cassidus must have been ordered by someone who's forgotten that fact. Whoever is behind this treachery, we must respond. As of now, I'm putting you in charge of the Azur Hawk. Consider it a chance to atone for your failure at the fort. Yes, I will, sire. Now then, I can't wait to see what young Echevalier has in store for us next. The future's looking bright indeed. As you say, sire. Commander? Yeah? It was just made official. I'm in charge of the Order of the Silver Phoenix. But don't worry, I'll continue my studies through graduation like all the other students. That wasn't my concern. His Majesty should be sending an official notice with all of the details soon. Until then, you should know that the Academy of Night Runners and its facilities will serve as our base of operations. <sighs> That's wonderful. Right? So it's finally happened. I always said you would take over the school, but for it to happen so soon... I wasn't really thinking about it when I agreed, but... We're a knightly order. How about that? Consider yourself lucky, boss. At least you got to be there. Not me. I was stuck in the infirmary with a concussion and bedpan. He was worrying himself sick, too. I think he was afraid we wouldn't let him join. That's not true! Take it back! Things have gone from interesting to insane around here. With Ernie in charge, this is going to be one hell of a ride. Good, you're all already here. Perfect timing. How's Batson piloting a gear, Ernie? Did you do something weird? Not at all. Care to tell them what makes this design special? It's got a miniaturized Magis engine inside it. <laughs> Even someone like me can use it. But that's high-grade military tech. Where the hell did you get your hands on it? From the government. I asked for it, and they gave it to me. Gave it to you? Hold on. I thought the engine was secret. Well, not as much as ether reactors, but yeah, they're not something you can just ask for. Guess the rules don't apply to Ernie. Batson's not the only one who can use the new design. Every one of the Knights in this should be able to operate them with minimal practice. You don't say. We can get twice the work done with those babies. Hey! <laughs> Ernie! Big news! Really big! It just keeps getting better. Two companies of Caldatoas. The Marquis apologizes for the delay. It's no problem. Your work is impressive. I might even let you tune up the hammer wards. 
If that happens, you won't be disappointed. So, there's definitely no backing out of this now, is there? It's tough, but it'll be worth it. I wish you could see her face. I've never seen you so happy. Yeah! Everyone, the time has come to hit them where it hurts. Hit who where? I'll get to that. The Order of the Silver Phoenix may be new, but we've been fulfilling our nightly duty for some time now. The development of a new unit, right? Yes. His Majesty has given us the greater goal of making the best machine we possibly can. But that's not all he's done. He's issued a challenge for our Order, and I think you'll all be excited about it. In ten months, we'll have a mock battle with a unit developed by the Silhouette Knight Lab! What? Wait, you mean THE Lab? We're gonna cream oh, those guys! That's gonna be great! We'll show them what a real mech is made of! I'm glad to hear it! Now, let's make a silhouette night so amazing it'll blow the roof off the laboratory! Yeah! yeah! Building on everything we learned from the Casadusis incident, I want to make a mech that has superior speed and mobility. Makes sense. It would help a lot. Right. And this is what will help us achieve it. Uh... What the... What am I looking at? Doesn't it look like... Mm-hmm. Great, put it over there, will ya? We're only making one new unit? We have a lot of work to do in ten months. But don't worry. I'm preparing option work so it can adapt during the mock battle. What are option works? Equipment that will allow us to use new tactics. Take the flexible coat, for example. Instead of holding a rod like the back weapon subarm, this subarm will hold a protective shield instead. The possibilities are limitless! Let's take uh, it one at a time, okay? Okay. You might finally make your dream come true, Ernie. Uh, that's what I'm hoping. I only get glimpses of it. But there's a robot made just for me somewhere in my head. The new unit and the option works are all vital stepping stones towards finding it. I can't reach it in my dreams. But, when I'm awake, these hands can make all of my dreams a reality. With the new silhouette gear, the Knightsmiths could complete their work with superior speed and efficiency. Of course, it didn't hinder the time-honored practice of slacking off. time and 
I'm sure the conversation turned more than friendly. I don't like this. If that's the kind of girl that Ernie is into, then how do I compete with that? Ernie! Uh, hey, Addie. What's wrong? I want to pilot a silhouette night, too! Huh? That's great, and your timing is perfect! Really? But before we start, there's something else I'd like you to help me with first. <laughs> Okay, it's all secured. Roger, thank you. Aren't you afraid they'll get mad at us? We didn't ask if we could use this Caldatoa. It's for new tech, they'll understand. You ready? Observe and take measurements. You got it. Okay, let's fire it up. A scratch. It's a miracle you were only knocked out after that much force. That isn't what happened! The mech came grinding to a halt! The thrusters completely drained the monopole almost instantaneously. Maybe if Ernie. I... Uh, Calm down, okay? I'm fine. It's just that... Uh, this equipment won't work! It's not out of the question yet, but it will need some serious redesigns. Ernie... But that'll take months! Did you think about what just happened?! <laughs> I really think it's too dangerous to build. Why don't we work on something else? Why? This wasn't a total loss. We know how much power it's capable of. I'm done thinking about what happened. I see the issues. So let's make some improvements and try this again. We'll re-examine the overall scale and output power of the spells. Then make a control system we can adjust on the fly. We can deal with the mana issues by altering the machine. Excuse then... me? Aren't you forgetting something? David is not going to be happy about this. Idiots! What were you thinking? <laughs> I told you. You demolished a brand new Caldatoa and nearly got yourselves killed doing it. I hope this taught you a lesson. Mm hmm As a matter of fact, we learned a lot from this. I've already come up with some improvements we could implement easily. Then you didn't learn your lesson very well, Ernie. You're done here until you do. Got that? Yes. Wow. He's so adorable when he gets sad. <sighs> you sure you want to give the kid some time off? Good point. He might get bored. Who knows what he'd do. All right, everybody. Let's get back to work. Let's start on the new unit, then. For this, we'll need two night runners, and I'd like Kid and Addy to pilot. Uh -huh. <laughs> so this new mech will be a two-seater. When were you planning to tell us? I just did. Cute. This mech is unlike any before it. That includes everything from the chassis to the controls. It will be complicated to pilot, so splitting the task between two people is ideal. But it will require night runners who can work together in perfect harmony. That's why you chose Kid and Addy. Yup. <laughs> steady, steady. Okay. You're putting in two ether reactors? This thing's going to be a real monster. Eddie! You okay? Say something! Eddie! <laughs> the armor's in pieces. Well, it wasn't fully attached yet. Oh, I'm sorry. I goofed up. You have nothing to be sorry for, Addie. Don't get so down. It's okay, really. The size of the machine and the mana it burns are on a different level entirely. So basically, it's a giant mess. What is this? <laughs> the poor girl is covered in soot and you're all just standing around. Let's get you clean. Uh, huh? <sighs> yeah, I needed that. But I feel bad being out here while the others are working. Well, stop it. We're night runners. They don't need us for the group. 
grunt work. So relax and let the sweat wash away. Oh, you should have invited Ernie. It would be perfect. Hold on. You're way too young to be bathing with a guy. Oh, please. You don't think I know that? Of course I wouldn't. But Ernie isn't a guy. Uh, Ernie is just Ernie. Uh, I see. Why are we cleaning up this mess? Even knights do the grunt work. Edgar? Hmm? There's something I'd like you to see. For you. Okay, what's it for? You can use it as a weapon, but it's for your mech. I had a special emblem graph imprinted onto the dagger's blade. It matches the emblem graph on the depression inside the slot. How clever. It's a key for the unit. Right. I'm hoping it'll help prevent thefts. Without the dagger, no one can pilot this mech. That's wonderful. I think that the Casadusis incident will be the last of its kind. Yep. And so, the Order of the Silver Phoenix and Silhouette Knight Laboratory completed their mechs. <laughs> Only three days remained until the mock battle. The excitement was palpable. Well, I've got to hand it to you, Silver. It's a work of art. Yeah. Thanks for everything. Now, let's show the lab what we're made of. The king wanted the best, and that's exactly what we'll give him. Yeah! They summoned the Aruvans for this little demonstration. Only the finest night runners would do. Anything less would be an insult to and the king. And speaking of the finest, I am proud to introduce the next generation mass production unit created by the Silhouette Night Laboratory to lead our fair kingdom of Fremavia into a bright and glorious future. Though they are based on the Telestali, I have personally improved them in almost every aspect. They may look like the Kaldatoa, but our Darsh is a completely new machine. We've decreased the amount of strand-type crystal tissue as compared to the Telestale, so the power output compared to the original model is <clears throat> only a humble 30% greater. 30? That's incredible. <laughs> However, we've also added an additional capacity flame, which not only serves to improve the unit's defense, but also solves the rapid drain on the mana pool. We've even added two silhouette arms to the back of the frame to hold the rod. As a result, the weapon is more mobile, easier to control, and therefore more effective at crushing any and all opposition, making this the greatest creation our lab has ever produced. Splendid work. I've come to expect great things from the laboratory, and you haven't disappointed. Your reputation as the finest knightsmith in the country is well-deserved, Master Geitzka. You honor me, your majesty. And now, lords and ladies... You've come to see the Darsh in action, and what better way to test a silhouette knight than with a worthy opponent? I'm sure by now, you've all heard of the one who made the silhouette knight the Darsh is based on. The group who, by my command, have formed a new knightly order. Enter, Order of the Silver Phoenix! Those footsteps are awfully bizarre. This is 
our latest prototype, the Zendog, as well as two Telestale derivatives equipped with our new auction works and the Guerre Custom. As commanded, the Silver Phoenix has arrived! The mock battle at the lab in the capital city of Kankunen is almost underway. With Ernesty leading the charge, the Order of the Silver Phoenix brought their new mech, the Zendog, and three silhouette knights equipped with option works. We're here, Majesty, as requested. The Order of the Silver Phoenix! Ah, who does this? A horse and rider. Interesting design. This might actually be challenging. It explains why the Ambassador recruited us. I thought fighting a bunch of kids would be boring as hell, but this might be fun. I'm sure you're wondering who that young man is. He is commander of the Order of the Silver Phoenix and the brains behind these new units. May I present the renowned Ernesty Echevalier. The child? Surely that can't be him. He developed the newest silhouette knight in a century? The boy must be a bona fide genius. He looks barely out of diapers. That's quite enough. These valiant warriors didn't travel all this way to hear the prattling of old men. Warriors! Prepare for combat. <laughs> I think His Majesty wants to see the fight more than anybody. Despite the uneven numbers, the match was deemed fair due to the Silver Phoenix's unique designs. Ernesty's four units would be pitted against all six of the Kaldatoa Darshas. Strategy would decide the victor. So like in standard practice, one mounted rider is worth the same as three infantry units. But that's for humans, not mechs. And they're all using enhanced telestales to boot. We'll have a major disadvantage. I can't wait uh, to see what the laboratory engineers did with the telestales design! Ooh! Let's ask them for a ride later! I shouldn't be surprised this doesn't face you, and yet... So, uh, how do you want us to fight these guys? Should we take three of them at the same time? Yeah, about that. I think I have an idea. Hello, beautiful. Looks like Premavia's been up to some amazing things. I'll have to play catch up. Prince Emerus, this whole area is about to be a war zone. We should get out of here. It's my first day home and a party's about to start. You're not gonna make me miss it. Come on, don't make me beg. Are both sides prepared? Move! Second platoon, you take the rider! Roger! Don't be afraid, it's three against one! The bigger they are! I'll handle it the same as any demon beast! Activating Magia's jet thruster, deploy from sword position, initiate air intake. <laughs>
Activate lightning flail! Idra, drop your shield! Not bad. Guess this won't be as easy as I thought. So the Silver Phoenix begins with field advantage. But for some reason, Ernesty's unit seems to have stopped cold. Huh. I don't know what kind of trick that little rat used, but pulling it off must have drained an enormous amount of mana. Crap. I was prepared for this to a degree, but down to 20%? I might as well be out of the fight. I need to let it rest and recharge. They'll just have to make do without me. Knight and Rider model even function! How do 
wolf form like Spork and Unison despite the unit's large frame? What kind of secret are you hiding? Answer me! <gasps> Excellent question. It's quite simple, actually. I added a second ether reactor to compensate. Yes, two reactors would explain it quite clever. But how did you make the blue one attain such incredible speed and maneuverability? And the white one, what was that metallic wire it shot from its wrist? I call them Magius Jet Thrusters. That's how the toy box is capable of such high speed. And as for the lightning flail, if you like, I can send the silhouette gear that was the basic model to the lab so you can play with it. Oh, I'd appreciate it. There's no stopping him, he's on a roll. Should have known Ernie wasn't the only mech enthusiast around. Maybe this is what he'll look like in the next 80 years. It looks like things turned out just as your majesty had hoped. No one can deny Ernesty's designs are revolutionary, but they're far too unpolished. Unless it is refined, even the greatest ore cannot show its true value. So Ernie is your ore, and you want the lab to do the polishing? To refine their prototypes, make them practical? I'm counting on you, Oliver. Someday, perhaps soon, we'll be taking him to the village. I'll be sure to let them know. After all, that's why you keep me around. That was fun, Chief Ernie! We'll come to your lab someday so we can talk more! <laughs> Young brats, don't count me out! I still won't let you beat me. To think there was still this kind of passion within me. I thought the fire had burned out long ago. Things didn't slow down after the mock battle had ended. Two months passed, and the lab finished polishing the Kalatoa Darshis, giving birth to the Kalatol, the new mass production model. Meanwhile, the Silver Phoenix developed the Zendo Limbo, a one-person version of the Zendo, further enhancing the mech's fighting power. Jerk it back real hard! It's easy! Sorry, can we take a break? Hey, sorry old timers, didn't mean to keep you waiting. I was training the night, and things got a little passionate. Think a couple of them may have soiled their armor. Were they slacking off while I was away, or am I just that good? <laughs> Whew, that cow toll, though. It's a hell of a toy. Any chance I'd get one of those just for me? Amorous, sit down and shut up, boy. I hope they taught you more than how to run your mouth in Kushpercha. Otherwise, Martina and I will have a little talk of our own. Enough. I called you here for a reason. Let's get to it. I've been king of our fair country for nearly four decades. I don't know about you, but that's long enough for me. I'm leaving the throne to Leo Thomas effective immediately. Grandpa. In the western year of 1280, Ambrosius, the Lion King, gave up his long rule and bequeathed the throne of Fremavia to his son. Leo Thomas. In the same year, at Lahiala Academy. I can't believe we've graduated. It barely feels like any time has passed. I'm just surprised they didn't kick all of us out. Yeah, all we did was cause trouble and skip classes. They're probably glad to finally be rid of us. Thanks, Lahiala Academy. We'll always be in your debt. After their graduation, Ernesty and the Order of the Silver Phoenix were relocated to the newly constructed Fort Orobesius to continue their nightly mission. But, soon afterwards... Uh, a summon from the capital? Great, you made it! Guess good things really do come in small packages. I suppose they do. I didn't expect you to be here. It's an honor. I heard you were studying in Kushpercha. Is there a reason you're back in Fremavia so soon? My old man's warming the throne now. Seem like a good reason to come back home? Please, time is wasting. I know you're busy, Ernesty. But I need a custom silhouette night made, and I'd like you to design it for me. I'd be happy to, Your Grace. But I thought you already had the Rita Solvila. It's an amazing unit in its own right. Why would you need a new one? That is the King's silhouette knight. He became Leo Thomas's the moment he ascended to the throne. 
I may be retired, but with no silhouette night, I can't entertain myself. And after your remarkable accomplishments, I know there's no one better suited to the task. In that case, make one for me while you're at it. Uh, uh, <clears throat> would it be possible for you to make two of them? It won't be a problem. So, what kind of mechs would you like them to be? That's easy. Everyone knows the most important trait is power. Right. Then power. Okay. Followed by power. I see. He's a muscle head. Any preference on how it looks? The sky is the limit. Super strong. Uh, like a lion. People should think of Gramps when they see it. Will that work for you, Your Grace? It should do nicely. As long as it's not too unbalanced. Do what you like. Understood. I promise these new units won't disappoint. They will be worthy of your nobility. He's got that look again. Ernest he returned to Orobesius filled with excitement and immediately began to work on the royal silhouette knights for Ambrosius and Emerus. The seasons passed in the blink of an eye. The units were completed and brought to Kankunan. Oh, wow! I'm proud to present the Gold Leo and Jill Batiga! As requested, the units are incredibly powerful, both in offensive and defensive capabilities. They should serve you well and keep you safe. Both of you are important to Framavia, so only the best will do. <laughs> They're even better than I was hoping. A golden lion and a silver tiger. I see. Well then, in that case, I'll, I'll take, take this one. Uh... Come on. You can't handle a flashy one like this. You're not exactly the vision of youth anymore. I'm aware. I'm equally aware of your inexperience, boy. A cub has to earn the right to be called a lion, and you haven't done that yet. That's so. Well, there's no time like the present. I'll show you everything I learned at Kush Percha. You intend to take it with a show of force? Very well, boy. I'll put you in your place. I'm so confused. They're both muscle heads. Shouldn't you be taking a nap, old-timer? Better show me some respect, lad. You're not too old for me to spank you. Part of me wants to stop them, but I'm kind of afraid to. Mm -hmm. Have at you! Slamming into the ground. Way to use 
lose your head, Amaris. Time in Kuspercha wasn't wasted after all, my boy. Did you pull back on me? Don't be stupid. My claws just aren't as sharp as they used to be. The Golden Lion is yours. Take it. Considering what I went through to get this bad boy, I'll make sure not to embarrass myself. Wow, he's fired up. Isn't he? Tell me, Ernesty. Sire? Despite the difference in appearances, the Jill Batiga and Gold Lee are on equal footing, yes? Yes, sir, in every way. It didn't make sense to build one stronger than the other. Very good. I'll make you proud, Gramps! <laughs> Hold on. This was his plan all along. Whether he won or lost, the Prince would still be better off. Understood. I shall send a rider immediately. The King's Conference was brought to a halt when a messenger arrived with dire news. It just came in from Alchisail Gap, marked top secret class one. Spotted a horde of shell cased. Bearing will put them at Alfheim. To Alfheim? Have they formed a defensive line? The Aruvans are in position and will defend it with their lives if needed. Shellcased. A type of demon beast whose body is covered in a powerful shell. Similar to a bee or ant hive, each colony is led by a queen, who also keeps the population growing. In rare cases, another queen will be born into the horde. When that happens, the horde splits and seeks out new territory. This time, Unfortunately, one of the newly formed hordes was heading straight for Framavia's most secret and vital facility. Everything was at stake. What I'm about to tell you is highly classified. The shell case are headed straight for Alfheim. It's where our most important technology, ether reactors, are made. <gasps> the ether reactor is a device that takes an ether from the air and converts it into mana. You could say it's the heart of a silhouette knight. If Elfheim is destroyed, what happens to us? We're done. Same for the whole kingdom. It will be impossible for Fremavia to make any more silhouette knights. I can't allow that to happen! No! We can't allow it! Every showcase will be destroyed! Silver Phoenix! Roll out! He's so intense. It's kind of scary. Clear 
Phoenix wins. <laughs> Batson, can I get a hand with this? Sure, no problem. They just got here and they're already making demands. I say let them. There's nothing wrong with having them owe us a favor. Thanks, Edgar. Guess it didn't take long for you to outgrow the rest of us. Not true. It's the same as the mock battle. If you'd been piloting these units, it would have been over before we got here. <laughs> you mean it? You defeated a behemoth and a queen shell cased on your own. Not to mention all of the new mechs you've built for us. It would be wrong to require any more of you. You fulfilled your end of our agreement. The secret construction method for the ether reactor will now be yours. Ah! I'm ready, sir! Tell me everything! Sorry. Only those who live in Alfheim Village know the process. And only the Guardian Ambassador may grant permission for entry into their sacred village. Who's that? Oh. Alfheim Village owes you a great debt. So do not worry. It would be quite rude of us not to welcome you with open arms. In accordance with our laws, I will take you there. Beyond these gates, any form of weapon is forbidden. By the way, Ernesty, I have a question. I was wondering how old you think I am. I would guess mid to late 20s. Not even close. As a matter of fact, I'll be 87 this year. <gasps> My people descend from the secret ones, and magic itself is our legacy. We elves prefer quiet places, much like Alfheim. There are some, like myself, who become ambassadors to the changing ones in the outside world. But we're considered strange by other races' standards. Still, they seem content enough to let us make ether reactors for their military. As for the secret, I don't know it. I'll take you to one who does, but I wouldn't get my hopes up. Because... I don't care! I'll hear it all! Research it all! Take it all apart! Reassemble it! And if it doesn't work, I'll try again! If it still doesn't work, that's when I'll decide to give up! But until then, I'll give it everything I've got! <laughs> I told you he wouldn't be swayed. The passion for his hobby is too great. Yes, I can see that now. He wouldn't even let me finish. I was about to tell you that only elves can construct ether reactors, but I doubt that would detour you. Why do so many elves live in secret villages instead of going out in the world? We can get quite lazy. It's a result of our longevity. See, for my people, it's common to reach 500. Huh. Uh for the first hundred years or so, elves are no different than the changing ones. But after two or even 300 years of life, our drive and interest in the world diminishes. Instead, we spend our time in rest and reflection.
Brocious. In accordance with the laws between our peoples, I shall grant your request. All the knowledge you desire will be yours, along with our gratitude. <gasps> I'm grateful. Though, to be honest, I can't help thinking I backed you into a corner. I forget how impetuous you humans can be. We share knowledge for the same reason you protect us. We see value in one another. So, what would you like to hear first? All of it! Down to the smallest detail! Don't leave anything out! Very well. An ether reactor is, at its core, the heart of a living thing. It absorbs the ether in the air around it and converts it into mana. What makes this exchange possible is the catalyst crystal. Without it, the reactor may as well be rock. Hold on a second. I thought they changed mana to magic power. Yes, that's true. But under special conditions, they can also turn ether into mana. However, two things are needed for that. The first is a special script, and the other is blood. Real blood? Not anymore, thankfully, though it's said that the original ether reactors were giant silver vessels carved with vast emblem graphs and filled with the blood of living things. They were impressive, yes, but had no practical use. Then an ancient sage made a breakthrough. He used what we now call alchemy to create this elixir. A small amount is all that's needed. Think of it as artificial blood. Next is the magical script. We use an incantation to carve the pulse of life into the reactor. Almost like a poem. It's for that reason. We call it the Life Song. But the Life Song's enormous size couldn't be altered. The silver vessel required to hold it was larger than the silhouette night it was supposed to run. Then another breakthrough was made. We replaced the vessel with a high-density metal, Mithril. It's so incredibly durable, even the dwarves' master smiths couldn't mold it. But in the hands of us elves, well, look. Oh! It's completely solid. Indeed. We learned that Mithril responds to a certain type of magic. It transforms into something soft and pliable, like clay. Uh, do you mean... There are catalyst crystals inside us, like the demon beasts. We elves can use magic at will from the moment we are born. This ability is the reason only the elves are capable of constructing an ether reactor. Thus, we used our gift to refine and mold Mithril as we saw fit. If you tried, it would prove to be impossible. Changing ones lacked the power to weave the life song and use magic at the same moment. About the ether reactor! How is the power output determined? The size of the catalyst crystal and the efficiency of the etheric transformation. Catalysts are taken from demon beasts and vary in size depending on the host. The bigger and more powerful the demon beast, the bigger and more efficient the crystal. Hence, more power. I didn't think it was that simple. It is, though that's where the simplicity ends. Tuning them is extremely difficult, so we used mined crystals for mass production units. They tend to be less powerful, but they are far more stable and safe. If mass production is the goal, it makes perfect sense! But let's say you wanted to create your own unique special silhouette knight. You would have to use something else, right? Something like a huge catalyst crystal taken from one of the biggest demon beasts you could find! Your former highness, I know just the demon beast that qualifies. I'd be eternally grateful if you'd let me use the behemoth for my personal project! I think we can come to some arrangement. But only the elves can create the reactor for you. It could take some time before they're free to. I've already got an idea that I think will solve everything. Very well. The victories were yours to begin with. The hearts of the behemoth and queen shell cased are yours to use as you wish. Uh, thank you, your highness! In order to master the ether reactor's creation method, Ernesty would remain in Alfheim. Ambrosius informed the Order of the Silver Phoenix. However... What do you mean, Ernie's staying here? Can I stay too, please? He is our commander. We should be at his side. Please, Your Grace, give us permission to stay at the fort. Do as you like. It's not as if you'd listen if I told you otherwise, right? Yeah! <laughs> Ernie studied. What was once only a dream was almost within his reach. 
His passion and the speed at which he absorbed the secret knowledge was so astounding, even the owls were amazed. The great elder said Ernie couldn't learn their secrets in a lifetime, but he mastered them after only three months. Thank you for everything! It's intriguing. You're a changing one, yet you see the laws of existence through completely different eyes. If you live as long as I suspect you will, we shall meet again. Western lands were ruled as one nation, 
with one king presiding over all. The name of that kingdom was Father Abaddon. Today, we are all that remains of that great legacy, which means the West is our birthright! The time has come! We will reunite this land, and any who oppose us will be crushed underfoot! On this day in history, Carlitos built Zalodek, eldest son of Bardomelo, king of Zalodek, declared war on the surrounding nations of the Occident. It was the beginning of what future generations would come to know as the Western Grand Storm. It would hold out longer than a mere month. The Federation is just a collection of tiny nations. They're no match for Zalodek's might. Even so, it should have taken longer than a month to overcome them. I agree. Something must have happened in Zalodek to embolden them. Something that would quickly enhance their power and drive them to ambition. In any case, they'll be coming here soon. Shield Trider's defenses must be reinforced. So it's true? Eleonora. I heard the servants gossiping. They said that war is practically at our gates. There's no need to concern yourself, my dear. Shield Trider's walls have always stood strong. We'll send those invaders home in stitches. Thank you for that, Father. I'm sorry for worrying. Martina, thank you so much for supporting my brother. 
I only wish we could have returned you to Vromavia. It was my honor to serve, Highness. Eleonora, I wish your mother could have seen what a wise and beautiful woman you've grown into. I am so proud of you. And she would have been too. You must escape with Martina and Isadola. You're not coming? What are you going to do? As king, I must fulfill my duties to the people. No. You can't! You have to leave! Try to understand. I cannot run and leave our people to suffer these invaders. Our knights are fighting them, and I should be there to lead the charge. Take care of her. For me. Even if I die trying. Isadola. She'll need your support through all of this. Yes, Highness. I'm heading out! Prepare the royal mech! I am Augusti Valio Kuspercha, king and defender of this realm! In accordance with the ancient ways, I request a duel with your commander. I am Cristobal, son of King Bartomelo of Zalatec. And I accept your challenge, old man. Well, let's go. trusted with politics. Don't fail me, sister. Leave it to me, dear brother. We're close to the Duchy's territory. Once we cross the river, we'll be safe. We'd be there now if it weren't for those ships, but no, they have to buzz around us like gadflies in a pigsty. Such undignified words. What would Emerus say if he heard you? What are you waiting for? Give them a good whack, Isadola. <laughs> Why'd you stop? Checkpoint. Saw his head roll personally. 
Let's get one thing straight, Princess. I'm not here out of concern. And I don't like small talk. So I'll just get straight to the point. You're going to be my wife. End of story. No, I won't! You think you have a choice? If you try my patience, I'll drug you until you comply. And if you keep acting up, I'll just kill you and make the other girl my queen. Your choice. Isadora, you can't! Father, I need you. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> what a pathetic girl. How can I punish her if she won't fight back? You are not calling off the wedding, Your Highness. I'm not that stupid. If I throw a wrench in my sister's plan, I may as well slit my throat. What's your take on the rumors of late? This demon-masked reaper? Probably just kush Purchin rebels causing mischief. They'll vanish eventually. Take them out, or I'll do it myself! No, Highness, you mustn't! You shouldn't involve yourself with such trivial matters. It would only validate their rebellion. If it's trivial, you shouldn't have a problem crushing them. Damn it all. What am I to do about this prince? Sounds like you're in quite the rough spot. I wouldn't mind getting involved. You're sending that idiot son of yours to look for the rebels? I can watch his back, keep him safe. If what I've heard about the Bronze Fang is true, I would welcome your help. Very well. I'll find this Reaper for you, and once I have, you can swoop in and kill it. Not a bad deal, wouldn't you agree? <laughs> Thanks to reports from Nora of the Azure Hawk, the Silver Phoenix found out about Princess Eleonora's plight and was moved to action. <clears throat> Guy wishes was Cristobal's face! A death that quick would be way too merciful! If he lays one finger on her, we won't let him! <clears throat> Now finish up, because we've got a princess to rescue! Just as Ernesty was putting his plan into motion, Zalodek's army deployed levitate ships to locate and destroy him. Uh, seriously? Yes, just like the Bronze Order said. So those are the riders carrying the Grim Reaper, eh? Supposedly they have a powerful knight with them as well. But I doubt they'll prove a challenge. After today, I, Gustav Mardones, will be known as the man who conquered death. Captain D, two flying ships approaching. Didn't think it was possible, but I guess Ernie's not the only person who can make crazy machines like that. Pretty sure that crest is Solidek, too. That rules out any chance that they're friendly. Prepare for a long range assault, boys! <laughs> We shoot first! Light up the sky! I guess they're not intimidated by the levitate ships. They might actually be a challenge. I'm sending out the Silhouette Knights. We'll finish them with our blades. Here, but you're all alone. 
Singing your goons away was a bad move, huh? What, did you think all I did was haul that carriage around? Think again, creep. Oh, damn you! You'll pay for that! Where'd that smoke bomb come from? What are you trying to pull? Till next time. Wait! Shoot them down! Hey, Crimson! You weren't that bad! Honor demands a rematch, so don't die until then! Those flying ships are cheating. Not to mention a major problem. If we'll be dealing with them from now on, Ernesty will have to make an effective countermeasure. Never thought I'd see Gustav the Sword Lover put up against a wall. That smoke bomb was you, wasn't it? How long have you been here? Couldn't say. I don't need help! Oh, so that withdrawal was strategic? I'll thank you this time, but it won't happen again. <laughs> the merchant city of Fontenay was once a beacon of prosperity. But sadly, once it fell to Zalodek's army, the Radiant City vanished and was replaced by cold desolation. I hardly recognize the place. Last time I was here, every day was like a festival. The Silver Phoenix soars through the night. Snuck in separately. How's our product coming along, Nora? They're ready and waiting, young master. You all know what to do. The royal family suffered long enough. Let's roll out! Magic Pabby Kids! Can you keep up? Yeah, this is easy! <laughs> <laughs> Think nothing of it, Highness. According to intel, the princess is being kept in the top floor of a tower in that castle. Hold on! There are four towers! Security was so tight I couldn't find out which one she was in, sadly. So I guess that gives us a one in four chance. Yeah. But to be safe, we'll hit all four towers at once. I'm telling you, they were out there here. Damn! Which part was this? Nora, we'll need an escape route. Consider it done. Go in hard and get out fast. Roger! All right. Sorry for the intrusion. I'm guessing you're Lady Martina? You are? I mean you no harm. The opposite, in fact. I'm Ernestia Chevalier, Knight Commander of the Order of the Silver Phoenix. Considering your wild entrance and calm disposition, I assume that you're from my homeland. You should be rescuing the princess, not me. Hey, what was that racket? Please, don't worry. My friends will have her soon. In that case, lead the way. Who the hell are you? Sir Knight, shall we go? I'm sorry if this gets a little rough. Now hold on tight. Cousin Reese, uh, is it you or am I dreaming? Hey now, no waterworks. You still have to get out of here. Come on, I'll carry you. Okay. <laughs> it going? I'm looking for the princess. Is that you by any chance? It is. And you are? My name is Arkid. I'm here to rescue you. 
rescue me who sent you. Uh, sorry, there's no time. You'll just have to trust me. Uh, even if we manage it, what will we do after we escape? Huh. My homeland is all but a memory now. There's no one I can rely on. Even if I go with you, I have nothing left. Please leave me be. I won't tell anyone about you. Just go. What? No way. It'll be all right. You have lots of people you can count on. I just know it. Now let's bust out of here and defeat the Zalotek. Okay? I don't have that kind of strength. No real power to speak of. You do! The fact I'm here proves that. You have the power to drive people to action. The same way you moved me. You just have to use it. You believe that? Sure do. And from now on, you have us. We'll protect you, I swear it. I'm not worthy of being protected by anyone. If people were to suffer because of me, I couldn't live with it. Come on! I don't get it. Why do you think this way? If they're willing to fight for you, you should trust that. Princess! I am Arcade Altar, and from this day forward, I am your knight. I will take up my sword for you and fulfill my duty. My lady, I await your order. Name it, and I will see it done at once. Okay, will you take me from this place, my knight? You bet. You okay? Yes. Thanks to my valiant knight, Arcade. Oh, for night, huh? <laughs> Eddie. Great work, everyone. Let's put this place behind us. ships for launch. That means now. Uh, sir! Things are finally getting interesting, it seems. Don't you think so, my dear? Hmm. I suppose I can go with you this time. It might prove fun. Stand a few raiders. Oh no! If they defeat us, it won't be the fault of my dear Levitate ship or its brilliant design, General. On the contrary, it will be the fault of the bloated fool commanding it. That's you. <sighs> Truthfully, I'm teeming with excitement. These raiders could be worthy. Unlike the rabble we fought so far, we can use them to test the true might of my creation. <laughs> Drink up, men! The ether is fine! The next day, the levitate ship of Doloteo Mardones found the Order of the Silver Phoenix and quickly intercepted them. Prepare Tarantos for launch! Helm, move us directly above them. Heads up, guys! Let me see what Dee told us about! I can't believe they already found us! Damn flying ships! It's so wonderful! <sighs> Not a blimp or a balloon, but an actual ship that sails through the sky. Beautiful. But how did they even come up with it? I have the advantage of knowledge they can never possess, and yet they have somehow carved themselves a path in the sky. It's too much. I have to stay up close. What the? Something's coming at us. Is it a projectile? No, it's too <laughs> big. Ah, it's him, the demon. <laughs> Completely different. 
design philosophy and accomplished it without sails or air magic? General, I need to see more! Shake that bastard off! Die, monster! All the Torontos have been wiped out! Put everything into the engines! Take us back to Fontany! Not yet! I haven't gotten a good look at it! It's really flying! <laughs> How dare it try to encroach on my sky! <laughs>
change shifts. Coach Perchance, grab a bite and get some rest. Way to go. It's just hard at first. You'll get used to it. Keep up the good work. Well, this should be easy enough to make. But I gotta ask, does the Akariga really need it? I won't be the one using it. Since I'm the only one who can fly, I figured everyone else could use anti-air weapons. You won't get any complaints from me. Knocking a flying ship out of the sky would make my day. All right, fine. Just give me some time to put it together. Right. Here's hoping it's ready before the Zalo deck decide to launch another offensive. This battle is against time. When we're out here, the war feels so far away. It's almost non-existent. Mm. So, uh... Eleonora's heir to the Kuzperchen throne now. Poor thing, it's not fair. That is what it means to have royal blood. She can't run from this, nephew. You cheer her up. Why don't you go pay her a visit, Reese? Oh, uh, sure thing. So, I got nothing. We need to help Eleonora. Any ideas? Hmm. Helvi, you're a lady. What would help you out of a funk? Uh, so just because I'm a lady, I'd know how a princess feels? Uh, Right, dumb question. You jerk! Kiss and get it over with. Uh. Just sleep in the same bed, that'll do it! And make sure to snuggle so she's nice and warm! Huh? We're supposed to cheer her up, not traumatize her. Uh. You got an idea, Ernie? Well, if she was a mech, I could figure out most of her problems by listening to the engine noise, but in this case, these two are useless. Why don't you give it a try? You're the one who made a vow of knighthood to her, kid. Cheering her up is your job now. Oh, a vow? Interesting. Addie's right. If you are her knight... Then it's your duty. Make us proud. Uh, uh, sounds like this matter is settled then. Kid will find a way to cheer up the princess. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Eleonora, it's Isadola. I brought a visitor. Come in. Oh, it's you. Yo, how's it going? Uh, I heard that you weren't feeling well. You're here to persuade me to take the throne like everyone else, right? Huh? Well, actually, I just came here for a visit and to try and cheer you up. As we speak, blood is being shed on the battlefield. Summon my name. How could I be cheerful knowing such things? Uh... Huh? Uh, you want to get out of here? Uh -huh. You've been cooped up for days now. Fresh air would do you good. You're not a prisoner in a tower anymore. Come on. It'll be fun. Um, okay. I told you I want this ready by morning! Complain and you work double! Boss, you got a minute? Uh, that a joke? You know the answer. To... Um, thank you for all your hard work, sir. Uh, your Majesty! <laughs> to hear it. Knight? Hmm? I don't understand how you can be so kind to a coward like me. Hey, come on. Stop talking like that. Nobody thinks you're a coward, all right? Least of all me, I think you're pretty courageous. If anyone says differently, I'll knock them out. <laughs> I have a job for you. The princess is being protected by this... Silver Phoenix Merchant Association. Get her back. Not that I'm ungrateful, Highness, but royal gratitude isn't nearly enough to risk my skin against a foe that powerful. Succeed, and I'll grant you peerage and land in Kushpercha when the job is done. You're serious? It would mean the restoration of the Hietakana's household. That's what you want, right? They're calling themselves the Silver Phoenix Merchants, or some other ridiculous alias. But they're just children playing soldier. Tonight, we get our lives back! Right! I think I'll use the Vindobadala custom! Oh. What do you want with the princess? What's with this thing? It won't budge! Did you 
think you could steal from us a second time? <laughs> Everyone mount up! They're never stealing another silhouette night again! Those morons screwed it up! If I try to run now, I lose my chance. You won't be getting away that easy. Out of my way, Brunt! Nice mech. They've made more improvements. Uh, so it's you. I've improved too! It won't be like last time! Oh, you're the kid I played with before! I was hoping I'd get to finish the job! Attackers have been slain. They won't trouble us again, or anyone else for that matter. I'm sorry you had to deal with such trouble on my behalf. Stop it. We don't need an apology. Keeping you safe is what makes us happy. You're our princess, and we're your knights. It's as simple as that. <laughs> served me well. Our pleasure, your highness. You found that sniveling princess? Then what are we waiting for? Wait, brother. Sit this one out, let the soldiers handle it. Not after what she's put me through. First, I'll destroy her, then the rest of her army. And I'll make the Silver Phoenix watch as I do it.
equipment are damaged. They can't maintain altitude. Spears can't reach this high. How'd they do that? Oh, an impressive invention. Jeez, they're heavy. Kay, you're good to go. Have another helping, jerk. We lost ship four. Stay close to the flagship. We must protect the prince. Hmm. So that's how you want to play this game? Curse those two Spurgeon dogs and their cowardly weapons. Curse the Sorantos, quickly! But sir, the pilots are still in them. We're too high up. If we can't get out of range of those spears, we're doomed! Lighten the ship, damn you! I've been waiting for this moment, Saladek. First company, open fire! You're through. I won't let you any further. They were waiting. It's a trap, and I fell right into it. They've made a fool of me! Looks like the Mishra Javelins are working as intended. Excellent! And Edgar's company is cleaning up their drop force without any issues. Time for me to add the finishing touches. <laughs> Deck, and I will be your doom. 
You should be honored. My, my. Dark weapons in close quarters combat gear. It looks like a standard Tele Star one, except you've made the face look so normal. I hope that's not all, or you're in trouble. Shut your mouth! <laughs>
In fact, I swear here and now to not rest until this is done. May I have your blessing? Do whatever it takes. Anything you say, Highness. Consider it a guarantee from the true ruler of the skies. The prince has been slain. No! The death of Prince Crystal Ball sent a shockwave through the armies of Zalodek. The orders of the Black Jaw and Bronze Wing were routed so badly, they had no choice but to fall back to Delvincool. As a result, the Kush Perchin Remnant was able to retake Fontany, the core of the East, with almost no casualties. <laughs> Terrified. The thought of all the good people who might fight and die because I gave an order turns my stomach. But then, I remember all I've seen. Like the courage of your knights as they stood up to conquerors. The hefty hammer that a dwarf must wield. And the Kush Perchin people desperate for a ruler who will serve and watch over them the way my father did until his dying breath. I'm ready. I'll pick up his mantle. <sighs> and I'll be with you until the very end. As your knight, and as your friend, my queen. Eleonora! As Queen Eleonora Miranda Kushpercha, I declare, our nation will not be forgotten to history. Instead, we will rebuild and make it stronger than ever! It was the Western year of 1281. The declaration of the founding at Queen Eleonora's coronation forced the Western Grand Storm onto a new stage and forever changed the course of the war. Want us to salvage the next batch? Yeah, that'd be great! There's plenty of material we could use. What about the current batch? Did you find anything interesting? Uh-huh. A lot. Like this little guy. What the... The heck is that? According to one of the airship survivors, it's etherite. Crazy, huh? A concentrated chunk of ether. Hold on. Isn't that the stuff in the air that gets absorbed into the ether reactors? Uh-huh. It's how we get mana. Zolodex forces are using something different. This device, which they apparently call an ether supplier, can transform this etherite into high-density ether at will for a sudden burst of power. That's an odd design. In other words, they can keep supplying fuel without having to gather it from the atmosphere. This device is the reason why the Toronto units are able to sustain such incredible power and seem to never run out of mana. It's incredible! A true masterpiece! You do realize this is the enemies, right? Of course, it has its share of shortcomings, too. Just look at this degradation. The high-density ether really does a number on the supplier. So much, in fact, that they designed it as a replaceable part. But the ether reactor is... the most important part of a silhouette knife. Like, it's hard. And they're tossing them after just one use? I doubt it was designed to be a permanent core. It's likely they only use it during emergency situations, like wartime. The amount of materials they go through must be staggering. Oh yeah, I also figured out how their levitate ships fly. A device called the Etheric Levitator uses the natural behavior of ether itself to defy gravity and achieve momentum using air magic. An Etheric Levitator? Another brilliant piece of technology! The amount of ether it needs to properly function must be astronomical. It had a ton of ether suppliers attached to it. Unfortunately, even the crew weren't told exactly how it works, so I can't know for sure. The only person with that knowledge is the Levitator's inventor, Horatio Kojas. I'd love to meet him. I bet we could learn all kinds of stuff from each other. Jeez, kid. You got enough of that fearless optimism to go around? Some folks around here could use a pitch or two. I know I could. Here, Sir Knight, say ah. Hold on. Please, your majesty, stop. Everyone is looking at us. Come on, it's one little bite. Uh, Kids turning red, how cute. Sorry to keep you waiting so long. Uh, what are you doing? 
nothing. Perfect timing. Join us. Hey, help me out here. What do you need help with, man? She's totally into you. <laughs> Never mind them, Ernestine. We have some important news to discuss. It's going well. All of our remaining forces have regrouped here in Fontenay. Thanks to you, of course. Sadly, the enemy still greatly outnumbers us, and there's nothing we can do to close that gap. I know they belong to you according to our contract, but would you be willing to give us the remaining silhouette knights you have claimed? If we could rebuild them, they'd be a boon to our forces. I know we're asking a lot of you, Ernie. I don't have a problem with it. Please, take whatever you need. <sighs> <laughs> to be honest, it would take way too long to handle all those silhouette knights with the manpower we have. If you're willing to help us rebuild them, we'd be happy to give you as many as you need in return. Beyond that, we'd be willing to lend them to you for the duration of the war and until Kushpercha is stabilized. Does that sound like a fair arrangement? That's perfectly fine. Thank you so much, Ernie. We're grateful. Okay, then. In that case, since the silhouette knights you'll be using technically belong to the Silver Phoenix, any silhouette knight you defeat with them will automatically belong to us. <sighs> I was just joking, really. No, you weren't. Come on. You're a hundred percent serious. This sucks. Why don't we get to have tea and cakes with the royal family? The Nightsmith takes pride in working in the background. Unnoticed. Wait a minute, David, are you crying? Crying is just sweat of the heart. With help from the Order of the Silver Phoenix, the army of the reborn Kushpurchin Kingdom devoted all its energy to expanding the military. The Zalodax, still reeling from the loss of the Prince, lost their momentum and the Kushpurchins began to push them back. Several months passed. This fortress now belongs to the reborn Kingdom of Kushpurcha! Let him hear us in Zaladex! Yeah! That was easier to take than I expected. Yeah, the Kushpurch and Knights are getting better. I'm proud of them. Do you think the others are okay? I don't have reason to worry. Ernesty and Dee are with them. They couldn't be safer. itself on blitz attacks, not slow advances. Uh, is that a levitate ship? A little late. And it's alone. <gasps> That's no ship. Look closer. Ancient 
Drake demon beast. I'm surprised Zalodek would make something so unorthodox. I found you, demon. The fever will put you down once and for all. Prince Crystal will finally be avenged!
I'm stuck here instead of in the middle of the action with my beautiful Viva. I wonder, Ernest de Chevalier, how will you try to fight my creation? <laughs> You got me all fired up. I can't remember a fight that really challenged me. This is your last chance! Run while you still can! You're joking, right? I'd rather die than turn my back on the likes of you! Coward I used to be is long gone! Lightning Flail! What's that? <laughs>
battle between Ernesty and the battleship Beaver ended in a tie. But the Kushperchans were so shaken, it felt like a defeat. It was the first time the Order of the Silver Phoenix had ever experienced failure. You got too crazy with it. The frame is a total mess now. There's nothing we can do here. We'll just have to send it back home. What will you do? Switch to another one? Horatio Kojas. Born to a family that researches ancient techniques. He fled betraying them and taking the pure ether operation theory with him. Hardly sounds trustworthy. Lord Kojas. General, if I'd known you were coming, I'd have tidied up. Oh, congratulations on a successful counterattack. You must be very proud. Successful? The demon is alive and the prince remains unavenged. What exactly are you working on? Just what it looks like. Something new for the Veaver so your next success will feel like one. And here I thought you didn't like to get your hands dirty. As they say, if you want it done right, do it yourself. Is this some kind of massive ether reactor? I didn't think they could get this big. Very observant. I call it the Blood Grail. It's specifically designed for high-density ether, though it's still a prototype. Thirteen reactors linked together couldn't stop that monster, so I had to do something. You think this will be the difference? Turn this on and you'll command a power that will make the demon look like an insignificant flea, in theory. <laughs> but even if it does work as intended, the power will be a double-edged sword. Once it starts to go out of control, nobody can stop it. <laughs> Again, just in theory. Does that scare you? Will you refuse it? But I went to all the trouble of putting it in. I even have blisters. Don't worry. If it'll kill the demon, I'll master it. That's what I wanted to hear, General. Oh, right. Equipment this delicate will need to be monitored, so I'll be coming along for the next battle. Really? You know how knights speak with their swords? Well, General, engineers speak with their creations. I can't wait. What kind of conversation will we have, Ernesty et Chevalier? New supplies have arrived from home. Your behavior aside, it's a loss to my army not to have a knight of your caliber on the battlefield. It's nice to know I'm appreciated, but my swordman is scrap and I don't have a spare. Not a problem. <laughs> no way! The Royal Silhouette Knight, the Algalorix. The best unit in all Zaladek. Brother Carlito sent it from home. But it won't do any good without a pilot. Use it as you see fit. Really? Thank you, Majesty. When I'm done, the demon and his friends will be in so many pieces that Grim Reaper won't know what to do! Reports indicate that the first fortress has fallen once again. The third fortress as well. They're pushing too fast. We can't keep the ground we took. So this Drake unit, did it really give you that much trouble? Yes. It's something entirely different than a levitate ship or silhouette knight. We should consider it a new category of weapon. Can you defeat it? Our first battle was a tie, but they're likely to improve the design. I would. And did. I equipped the Magius Jet Thruster with a protective filter that should mitigate the effect of their smoke shells. They won't clip my wings twice. But that isn't what you asked, and to be perfectly honest, I doubt the Ikaruga could beat it the way it is now. You seem oddly calm about that, Ernie. What's Zaldek's next move? More of the same. Their basic tactic will be an assault from the air, using the Drake and their airships. The only ones who can fight this, I'm afraid, are my Ikaruga and the Order of the Silver Phoenix. All right, we'll form a unit around Ikaruga and counterattack. Hopefully it's enough. There is a chance the Drake won't show up, in which case... We'll have committed our entire force and left the homeland defenseless. This war will be over quickly if our base is destroyed. Then we'll strengthen our defenses. Won't that just cause the enemy to throw everything they have at us? Yeah, and they just received fresh supplies and soldiers. I'd like to avoid a mass battle. We don't have the numbers to survive it. So, is there any way to strengthen the defenses and take out the Drake at the same time? You idiot. Sorry! As it stands, we don't have a way to do that. The point of the meeting is solving this problem. Didn't have to hit me. Hmm. Damned if we do, 
Damned if we don't, huh? Not quite. <laughs> there is an option no one has considered. If the enemy is afraid of another confrontation with Ernesty, then... We should give them that by attacking Delvin Cool head on. But your harness! We can't! You'll be left here without a single knight to protect you. I wouldn't want my top advisors worried about me. So I'll go with you. We'll take our full army and the Order of the Silver Phoenix as well. They won't be expecting it, that's for sure. I know I wouldn't. I'm through with this constant back and forth. Enough knights have died for us. Enough people have suffered at the hands of Zalodek. For Kush Percha, we'll take back our capital at last. <laughs> My brave knights of Kush Persia, these past months have been fraught with trials and tribulations no nation should face. We lost our beloved capital to a country of cowardly invaders. We've lost our loved ones, and still, we're in danger of losing even more. But we will rise again, through our own efforts and through the power of our newfound friends. Instead of letting that night of tragedies haunt us, we will use it as fuel. We will retake our capital and avenge the fallen. As queen, I swear Kush Persia will be whole and at peace once more. But before that peace comes, we will remove the invaders from our home and make sure they never return. All forces, to victory! Stirring speech, nicely done. Do you really think so? Yes, being queen suits you well. You're doing a great job, Highness. Don't be so formal. It's weird having my family call me Highness. You better get used to it, and quickly. Things have changed. We can't go back to how they were. Ernesty. Yes, your Highness, what can I do for you? As queen of Kush Percha, I feel I must apologize. You are a guest, and yet we entrust so much to you. I regret that more than anything. Please, think nothing of it. I have my reasons for being in this fight. Let's just say our interests align and leave it at that, all right? He's right, Ellie. Don't apologize, you might spoil him. Next thing you know, he'll ask for all your mechs and castles. Gee, thanks a lot, Highness. That wasn't very nice. Yeah, but it's true. <laughs> <laughs> The Kushpurchin army made their move with haste. The goal of the operation was to down the Drake battleship and retake the old capital of Delvincourt. Their momentum fully restored, they pressed on until reaching Shilda Nariaku Fortress, the last obstacle keeping them from their goal. There, they encountered Zalodek's army. Ah, how kind of the queen to come to us. Burn her. 
order to cinders in front of her entire army! Oh my, as I live and breathe. The demon's here, and he's gone through some changes. Rather odd, that. I'm not sure what it is. I see now. You plagiarist. How's my levitate ship working out, I wonder? You know, for a second there, I didn't think we'd have this thing ready in time. Never underestimate the ingenuity of a dwarf. Is it too late to turn around? I really don't want to be here. What do you mean, oh, Batson? This is when we put forth our best effort. I'm so excited I'm shaking. Let's do this! Do what exactly? For the glorified engine for this thing, we're kind of stuck here. What's important is how you feel. When I first saw airships, I knew a design like the Drake wasn't far behind. Sorry, I can't allow you to exist. If I don't defeat you, this world will trend toward larger weapons. With each redesign, the airships will slowly become battleships. If that happens, the robots I love more than anything will become obsolete or completely forgotten. No way. Not while I'm alive and kicking. I'll destroy that outcome. So that robots are the future! This should prove quite interesting. Beaver versus demon, large versus small. I wonder whose technology will come out on top. Only one way to find out, Lord Kojas. The time for talk is over. <laughs> this should prove quite interesting. Beaver versus demon, large versus small. I wonder whose technology will come out on top. Only one way to find out, Lord Kojas. The time for talk is over. Done. I'm impressed, Commander. 
back at you. You're something else. The Azure Hawk's lucky to have you. <laughs> they really have us backed into a corner. My, my. I guess there's only one way to fight back now, General. <laughs> Fine, we'll use this. Maximizer. Blood Grail, activate! Uh, Roger. Blood Grail activation is a go. <laughs> Linking element crystal collapse. High density ether supply to all reactors. Maximized form and Keep you from 
crazy? And this time a smoke bomb won't save your sorry ass. What the? This'll be a bumpy ride, Edgar. Uh, how
collapsed in the face of Kushpurja's assault, and Shogun Ariaku fell. The capital, Delvincourt, had used all of its forces to defend Shogun Ariaku, and was unable to offer any resistance as the reborn kingdom's forces moved in. Thus, the ambitions of the Kingdom of Zalodek collapsed. The spring of Western Year 1283, the coronation held at Delvincol served as a message to the surrounding kingdoms. Kushpercha had returned, and it was stronger than ever before. At that moment, Eleonora became both the de facto and de jure Queen of Kushpercha. Quit slacking off! Get that stuff loaded! Or you'll be tasting my boat! <laughs> you morons did a great job tearing these things to pieces! Sorry about that, boss. If it helps, we know they'll be better than ever once you're done. <laughs> Stop it, you're making me blush. You're gonna be real busy when we get back home. That sucks! I won't be the only one. I'm sorry, Ernie. Building scrap is the way of the world, kid. As long as you're safe, I'm fine. Besides, I have this. There's so much to learn from it. <laughs> Your Majesty. Come on! Uh. Isadola, you think it's safer out here? Please. I don't think I could be anywhere safer. You'll be leaving soon, won't you? Uh, yeah. Though, it feels weird to go home in a levitate ship. I'm still trying to get over that. My noble knight. Uh? I'll never forget how you protected me. Or the amazing things you've done for Kushparcha. I don't know. Doesn't feel like I did anything special. You have! Once things calm down here, be sure to visit us in Fremavia, okay? Of course. Well, see ya. Ah, you massive idiot! Don't say bye! If Kid was a silhouette knight, I'd be rewriting his program. Uh, I don't think you have room to talk, Ernie. That settles it. Every guy in the Order is dumb as a rock. What? <sighs> Sorry. Let me stay like this for just a moment. After that, I'll go back to being queen. Luck to you, my noble knight. Jet thrusters, huh? A truly interesting choice, I must say. Ernesty Echevalier. How far do you think your devotion to aesthetics will take you? Honestly, I can't wait to find out for myself. Of course, you'll learn more about my theories too. Perhaps even sooner than you were expecting, my young rival. Now then! To find another king with delusions of grandeur willing to buy my inventions. <laughs> Ernie! Uh, let's go inside. It's freezing out here. I think the boss is making pot of food for lunch. Welcome home, Silver Phoenix. Your work out there has been exemplary. Especially you, 
night, runners. Your bravery will be a shining example to all who come after you. Your prowess in battle shall be remembered by all for generations to come. And of course, there's our industrious nightsmiths who toiled ceaselessly to keep our night runners in the fight. Without your endurance, Zalodek may very well have succeeded in their grim endeavor. And thank you, Knight Commander, for giving my worthless grandson some glory. I will reward you with anything you desire. Nothing is off limits this time around. Ask and it shall be yours. Okay then! I won't hold anything back! <sighs>